you're planning a ski or snowboard trip to Valle Nevado, Chile. But what about La Parva? It's a resort that's right next to Valle Nevado. Should you go there instead or split time between the two? Or maybe forget La Parva and just stick with Valle Nevado. I'm visiting both right now and these are some factors that I've identified that may help you decide whether to visit one or both. First, some of you may be saying, what's the point of this video? Valle Nevado and Parva are connected, so you can ski or board both on the same day. In fact, this lift is at La Parva, and I'm standing in Valle Nevado. Well, that's true, but not necessarily every day, because if the snow conditions are bad or they're too good, they have too much snow, the slope connecting the resorts will be closed. And if you're planning a trip in advance and only select one of them, you won't be able to go to the other unless you drive in the morning. Others of you may be asking, what about El Colorado? That's it right there. You can see it from Valle Nevado. When I first came, I thought that was part of the resort, but it's not, separate resort. The reason I'm not including El Colorado in the comparison is because it's about 50% beginner terrain. Valle Nevado and La Parva are a lot more similar in how much advanced and expert terrain they have, which is much more than El Colorado. I figure if you're a beginner, you'll be very happy with El Colorado, but for those who want more advanced terrain, the better comparison is La Parva and Valle Nevado. If you plan to arrive on a weekend or a Chilean holiday, you'll have to take into account the road direction. The road becomes one direction for certain parts of the weekends and Chilean holidays. Between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. it's uphill only, and from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. it's downhill only. If you want to leave in the morning on the weekend, you're going to have to get really early or you're not going to be able to do it. The timing of those directions may shift based on the weather. If you prefer hotels, then you may lean toward Valle Nevado because they have several of them, including this, which is Hotel Puerta de Sol. It's the most prominently featured in the marketing materials, mainly because it sits at the top of the village, closest to the chairlifts. The hotels are generally all inclusive, so your meals are included. I'm not staying at a hotel, so I can't show you what one looks like, but if you read the reviews, you'll find a mixture of rave reviews and complete disappointment about outdated rooms and thin walls. I don't know, maybe they've updated the rooms, maybe some people too hard to please, but do your research before you choose one. Valle Nevado also has apartments for rent. That's what I did. I looked on Airbnb and found this place right here. My main goal was to find a place that was as nice as possible, but not overly expensive. I wanted to be as close to the slopes as possible, have Wi-Fi, and just be generally comfortable in the place. Unfortunately, it still came out to be pretty expensive. This is what $450 a night gets you at Valle Nevado during the first week in August, which is just at the end of high season, starting with the kitchen. You can see it's fully stocked, and that's important whether you're staying at Valle Nevado or La Parva, because there aren't any large markets up on the mountain. So it makes sense to stop off at a larger grocery store in Santiago on your way up in order to stock up on food, because once you get up here, the choice is limited and the prices are high. Then you get a nice living room with direct TV, Wi-Fi, a balcony overlooking the mountains, and guess what? A actual working gas grill. Two bedrooms with enough space for six people between four bunk beds and a master bed. And two bathrooms. The hotels are ideally situated for access to the slopes and lifts because it's all right there. If you're staying in an apartment that's on this side of the parking lot, you have it made pretty well too because all you need to do is go out the front of your building and you're basically on the slopes. There are some cat tracks that take you right down there. If, like me, you're staying at a building that's on the other side of the parking lot, all you need to do is walk across the parking lot and you're right there too. So it's pretty much ski in, ski out. Now there are a few buildings which are set back a little bit further from the rest of the apartment rental buildings that I've been talking about. Not sure if those are actually rentals or whether those are for staff who are working at the resort. But if they are rentals, then you would have a bit of a walk to the slope. The layout of La Parva is a little bit different. It's still a collection of buildings, but they're all right here congregated on the mountain. Some of them are more interior, so you will have to walk to the slopes. If you can get a rental that is right on the slopes, that's perfect. But I'm sure you're gonna have to pay for it. Also, not sure how many of those accommodations on the slopes can actually be rented. Those owners might just be keeping them for themselves. Because there are so many accommodations that are internal and not that close to the slope without a walk, there are free shuttles that run back and forth, so you just have to catch one of those. And this is what $350 a night gets you at La Parva. Kitchen, no oven or microwave though. Dining table with seating for five, spacious living area, and outside another gas grill on the balcony can't actually see it, but the view is of the slope because this is basically a ski in and ski out accommodation. Master bedroom, bunk beds with the bottom being enjoyed by a ski bag right now, and one single bathroom. 
one key thing to know is Wi-Fi. It's not a given. If you're at the hotels in Valle Nevado, yes, it is, you have it. But if you're staying at an apartment, you don't necessarily have it. When you're looking up listings, definitely make sure they have Wi-Fi. Otherwise, you may be without. When you go to La Parva, there are no hotels, so there's no guaranteed Wi-Fi. There, it's even more important to make sure you're getting Wi-Fi with your listing if you really want it. La Parva has a 960 meter vertical drop and 988 ski ball acres. That compares with a lower vertical drop at Valle Nevado of 810 meters with 2,224 ski ball acres. So if you're coming for a week and are only going to stay at one resort and not connect between the two on the mountain, Valle Nevado will give you more terrain to ski aboard. Let's see what it's like to do a red slope at Valle Nevado. Red on the South American trail map system is advanced intermediate. It's in between blue intermediate and black, which is expert. This is a fun slope. Generally has no bumps, often groomed, although right now it's a little bit icy. If they groom that overnight, it'll be perfect. Valle Nevado has had three feet of snow, but three weeks ago, since then, nothing. So some of the snow has gotten pretty hard. What I like about this slope is there's usually not many people on it. I think one of the reasons is that it goes all the way to the bottom, which means you have to take a very slow lift. That might be annoying to people. But as you can see, it's like doing a, in your fantasy world, a downhill race. Just go as fast as you want. You don't have to worry about anybody. All right, so let's check out a red slope, Barros Negros at La Parva. It's not the best conditions, so it's not gonna look that nice, but I still kinda wanna give you a sense of what a red slope is at La Parva. So here we go. Yeah, really, the flat light doesn't make for the best ski video. But it's not terribly flat. I can make out tracks where I'm skiing right now. So hopefully you can see it as well. It's a nice groomed slope, although not recently groomed. No bumps. Probably a little too steep for beginners. Well, definitely for beginners. Probably too steep for advanced beginners hey nobody's out here so that makes it more fun you got the slope to yourself basically other than a couple of people I passed not oh, spoke too soon now I got some people coming up on so just head over to the right stay away from them and back down to the lift it's a nice Smooth slope. So that's Barros Negros. What is the lift situation at the two resorts? So it comes down to a question of how much do you really want to sit down on a lift? There are more options here at Valle Nevado, even though they have less lifts. Either way, you're going to be dealing with a lot of button lifts and T-bars. I'm on one of the few chair lifts in La Parva. I just wanted to point out, if you come here and are really banking on what lifts there are, check this out. This one is not even running lift tickets. If you have an Icon Pass, Valle Nevado is covered. It's the only resort in South America that accepts either Icon or Epic. It will power about 50 US dollars for a one-day ticket. So if you're going to spend any or all of your time at La Parva and you have the Icon Pass, you have to pay something more. To use your Icon Pass at Valle Nevado is pretty simple. There are two ticket offices. One is up at the Hotel Puerta del Sol and one is down at the base of the gondola in the main parking area if you're driving up here for the day. Just show your Icon Pass and they'll give you a pass that works on their lifts here. Let's talk about how crowded Valle Nevado and La Parva get. This is really just based on one week in August in 2022. During the week, neither resort seems to be very crowded. In four days at Valle Nevado, I only rode on the lift with another person twice. Friday at Valle Nevado, I started to see the parking lots fill up more 
and more people were staying at the apartment building where I had a rental. I came to La Parva for Saturday, so I don't know exactly how crowded it's going to get at Valle Nevado, but some people who've been here the week before told me that the weekends were very crowded and the weeks were totally empty. That's wrong true so far, at least in terms of the week. I've read that La Parva tends to be less crowded than Valle Nevado on the weekend, and it's a Saturday at 11 a.m., and so far that seems to be true. I'm on one of the chairlifts, and look at how many people are behind me. Nobody. It was fairly busy down at the base because a lot of kids are doing ski school and races, so they are there with their parents, and there's a lot of action. But when you come further up on the mountain, a lot less. Part of the emptiness up at the top of the mountain right now may be because it's not that great weather. As you can see, it's kind of overcast, flat light. If you have a different experience at La Parva on the weekends, let me know in the comments below. All right, let's try a black slope just off the Andes Express called Momia or Mamia. Not sure what the Spanish pronunciation is. Right now, all of the black slopes in Valle Nevada have been groomed. So it's a nice, steep, smooth slope. Freshly groomed last night. It's pretty short though, but this gives you a sense of what it's like. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show you a black slope from the Parva because it just got so windy, they've shut all the lifts down. So this is my last run. I don't think it would have been anything worth seeing right now in these conditions anyways, because it looks nice behind me, but it's basically all white everywhere. No matter what your choice, only La Parva, only Valle Nevado, or both, if you haven't been to Santiago before, I'd highly recommend spending some time there. Some told me there's not much to see, but I totally disagree. It's just one day I went to La Choscana, which is the Santiago home of famed Chilean poet Pablo Neruda. I learned about his eccentricities and his political beliefs. I had delicious ceviche at a restaurant called Lamar, including a salmon version, which I've never had before, and the Museum of Memory and Human Rights, which I found totally impactful. Starting out with the plaques they have in the lobby dedicated to investigations of human rights violations throughout the world. And of course, a large focus on the military coup in 1973 in Chile, which installed Pinochet in power. All this is stuff that I was never taught in the U.S. elementary school system. So it was really worth the time to go and check out that museum.